Hello YouTube and welcome. In this video, I'll be showing you how to detect living off the land techniques using Azure Sentinel. So grab your coffee or your whiskey, because you already know this one's going to get pretty saucy. Also, thank you for everyone who comments and likes and subscribes to my videos. Uh, it really just helps to support the channel. So thank you very much. Enjoy the video. Like and subscribe. If you are unfamiliar with the Living Off the Lands binaries and scripts, aka Lolbass projects, I'll just give you a quick brief overview of exactly what it's about. So the goal of Lolbass project is to document every binary script and library that can be used for Living Off the Land techniques. So Living Off the Land techniques, a law bin library or script must be a Microsoft Science Script, either be native to the OS or downloaded from Microsoft. It must have unexpected functionalities. It's not interesting to document intended use cases. It must have functionality that would be useful to an APT or red team. So interesting functionality can include any of the following. So it can include executing code. This can be arbitrary code or pass through execution of other programs or unsigned scripts by a law bin. Uh, this can include um, compiling code, file operations, downloading, uploading, copy, etc. Persistence, so pass through persistence utilizing law bin, uh, persistence to hide data in ADS, uh, execute a login, uh, user account, credential uh, bypass, and credential theft. So using these built-in tools and introducing and not introducing any new tools is an easy way to defeat countermeasures. So built-in tools include like CMD, uh, CertUtil, CScript, BitsAdmin, EventViewer, RunDLL32, CPL, etc. So the list is pretty substantial. I'll drop a link to the GitHub project for Lolbass in the description of the video um, and then you can go check it out. So for this video I'll be focusing on a specific technique which if you mapped it to the MitreAttack framework would be T12, T12.18.0.11 That was a mouthful um, which is signed binary proxy execution for run DLL32 so the Windows Run DLL32 binary is designed to run 32-bit dynamic link libraries. So apart from loading, apart from directly loading DLLs, this process can be used to execute JavaScript or load regist uh, registered or hijacked COM server payloads. So adversaries may abuse Run DLL32 to proxy execution of malicious code. So using Run DLL32 may trigger, may avoid triggering security tools that may not monitor uh, that sort of process because it's on the allow list or, you know, it's a false positive uh, from normal operations. So the challenge for most SOCs is the movement from a completely custom built in, completely custom built tool chain to a partially living off the land or open source tool set which can bring difficulties to the analysis of security incidents which is fundamentally a difficult task you know due to um, time data constraints and false positives but there are some upsides to more adversaries sharing the same or similar techniques so living off the land techniques are by definition on the system before compromise and often even part of the operating system. So this means that as you guys, SOC defenders, you have a better chance to prepare and based on your environment to detect this abnormal behavior. Additionally, Windows built-in tools over time have increasingly got better with their security, with their logging and their visibility um, into these features, which gives us the security analysts or the network analysts um, an additional high confidence for the data source. So, for example, deep script block logging and anti malware scan interface features are now available in PowerShell 5. 
So for this video demonstration, I'll be leveraging uh, Run DLR32, which will execute a malicious DLR file on our victim's machine, which will then spawn a reverse interpreter connection back to my Kali Linux VM. I'll also be showing you the detection capabilities I've made around the Azure Sentinel query. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Okay, so we're now on our victim machine. Let's assume this DLR file has been sent via a phishing attack. So on this on the desktop here, you'll see a simple file uh, called lol.txt. Um, you know, if you're an IT professional, you know straight away that um, that is not a .txt icon. Um, so let's just try and run this real quick. Okay, that appears to have done nothing. Or has it? Let's flick over to our Kali VM and check to see if that's actually obtained any access. And it has. Okay, so we now have a uh, interpreter session back to our Kali VM. So that batch file basically ran the DLL file using the run DLL32 process from our Kali VM, which is <coughs> hosting our file using the Python simple HTTP server. So now on the box, we can do some juicy recon. So we can go sysinfo. Okay, so it's given us all our sysinfo. We can get user ID. Okay, let's have a look at some processes, what's running here. Um, in fact, let's launch a shell. Nice. Okay, let's do an IP config. Oh, this is this is juicy. Um, so you know we, you can do a whole array of of network recon here. You know, fire some more modules in. You know, you get proper sexy with it. Um, so let's exit out of this. I want to show you one more cool thing. Um, because this this is really really juicy. Uh, so I'm just gonna run key scan underscore start. Okay, so this is actually starting a keystroke sniffer. So if I jump back over to my VM here, I'm just going to open Firefox. And I'm just going to go Google. Um, my bank password is hello. And then we're just going to bring up Notepad, and we're just going to pretend that the username is Craig Cloud IT Pro. My password is not a chance in hell. Okay, so I'm going to flick back over to my Keller Linux VM. Uh, I'm going to go key scan underscore dump, <laughs> and now. We can actually see that it's captured all of the keystrokes. So Goo actually didn't finish writing Google, uh, auto prompted. But you can see my bank password is hello, Craig Cloud. And then I corrected myself. Uh, and then not a change in hell. So I obviously can't spell chance. Um, I think I really need some uh, English literature. Uh, you know, courses, but uh, yeah, let's move on. Um, so I think it's pretty safe to say that we've, <coughs> what I mean we've, I mean I, have successfully uh, infiltrated the system. Uh, the connection also, if you notice, bypassed Windows Defender um, as well. Because it's leveraging the Run DLL32 process, um, it's actually obviously living off the land of that process. Uh, and all we're doing is passing a, uh, a simple malicious DLL file which then initiated our interpreter session. So how do we detect this type of living off the land scenario? Let's jump over to the Azure Sentinel dashboard and I'll show you how using Sysmon. Okay, so we are now in the uh, Sentinel dashboard. Um, so I'm gonna be building this query with uh, Sysmon. Um, I feel like it provides a lot more detailed information. Um, so we're going to start it straight away. So we know it's an event. 
and there'll be nowhere source um, equals equals and then it's Microsoft uh, dash Windows dash Sysmon and then we can hit enter on this awesome that's the fella so we know that it's event ID oops where event ID equals one um, and uh, render description has original file name and then it's run dll32.exe so i'm just going to pop this and hit this okay now we've got a lot less results that's awesome okay so for the next part what i'll be doing is passing the event data for various properties um it will pretty much be the same query syntax for each line just different properties so with the power of video editing um i'll skip forward okay now we've got the um the event data here it's all passed nicely uh, and what we're going to do is just go project here i'm going to go user uh, original file name command line and pair nope parent command line okay nice okay so now i've established that we know that uh our dll actually had a network connection back to our attacker's machine so for this we now need to do a join command and then we're going to join this on event again and then we're going to go where uh, source obviously let me just grab this at the top because this is just going to be a hell of a lot quicker let's go here let's go there source okay and then the event id is three whoops equals equals three um and then if we go where and then render description contains and then we are looking for network connection detected okay so let me just hit this okay so that's failed oh yeah because we haven't finished our join query off okay so what we're gonna do is i'm just gonna quickly pass this event data here with star and then user uh here user for slash data uh, and then with the power of video editing i'll just skip through the next two bits okay so at this part and now we need to do not another pass we need to do a project and then we're going to go time generated we're going to go user and then we're going to go destination ip <coughs> on use whoops on user and then we're just going to project away the user one column okay hit enter excellent excellent so now we have our full query here so if I just expand this out, we can see a little bit more. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we can see that our user was Central Park Azure Admin. The original file name, which was ran, was rundll32.exe. The command line, which was ran, rundll32.exe. And I actually called my um, attack uh, attacker machine, the Kali Linux VM, which was serving uh this file on there and then the parent command line um obviously use cmd.exe and uh it was actually in a batch file so the batch file called cmd called run 32 and then you can see the destination is 10.0.0.4 so that's actually our kali linux um virtual machine so this is a is is a nice little query here. Um, please forgive the, uh, the 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 pausing of the video, but you can see that 
you know, the event passing is pretty much the same stuff. And if I'm trying to talk through it while type, you know I'm not very good at that so far. I should, you know, put that on my uh, key skills to improve. Um, but this is our nice query. It's built up. We've joined the event data uh, from sysmon1 and then found the original file name. And then we find the command line. We've looked at the command line, which contains .dll or contains a comma. So this is um, obviously very important. So DLL options may be case sensitive. So run DLL may also fail if there is additional white space between the DLL name uh, or if it doesn't contain a comma or there's no um, function to actually call the entry point for the DLL. So if you pass the wrong type of DLL to run DLL32, it may fail without even returning any form of message. Um, so we then passed again the event data for command line, uh, and then we projected our user, the original file name, command line, and parent, parent command line, <coughs> and then we joined this to the event ID 3, which is uh, where network connection was detected. Again, we passed the event data for user, and then we grabbed the destination IP of where that file is actually going. And then we projected it where user 1. So that's it. Here is our query for detecting run DLL 32 uh, LOLVAS connections. Thanks for watching the video. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If not, well, that's just fine. Please subscribe, tell your friends, tell your family, tell your nan. Cheers.